Welcome to Seesaw and Literacy Stations. We are really excited that you are here today joining us and learning more about Seesaw and using them at Literacy Stations. I'm Angela and I lead the community team here at Seesaw. You can find me on Twitter at Mrs. Gadkey. And let's talk about the plan for today. We are going to focus on I'm going to give you a little bit of background of how I used independence, choice, and creativity when I was in my kindergarten classroom. We're going to talk about word work examples. We're going to talk about reading. We're going to talk about ways to clone yourself. I think that's always helpful to have in your back pocket. And then we're going to spend time at the end talking about your questions and next steps. So let's just jump right in. The first thing I want you to kind of think about as we are going through this content is how can CESA enhance what my students are already doing at Literacy Station. So if you even think about what your students are involved in this week, kind of keep that in mind as we're progressing because I really encourage teachers to think about adding a layer to CESA when it is appropriate and makes sense. So I will be sharing some ideas with you, but the real intent here today is just to maybe spark an idea, or hopefully maybe you see something that I show you that's similar to what you do in your classroom, and you can think, oh my gosh, I'm gonna tweak that and, and give that a go. So I hope that's what we provide for you today. So ideas that I'm gonna share really will work well if you're brand new to Seesaw or even if you're advanced. A lot of the examples are geared toward, of course, this pre-K through second grade audience is kind of who I'm sharing specifically for today. You're going to see a lot of examples from my, when I was in my kindergarten classroom, but also I want you to think about it in terms of your students as well. So even though maybe the exact example I share isn't totally perfect for your kids, it's going to be something that you can apply at your grade level too. So here we go. So the first thing that I wanna talk about, and I get asked this question a lot, um, is how do you actually set this? How do you do this? How do you set this up um, in terms of even having literacy stations in your classroom? Because they involve a lot of independence, a lot of choice in my classroom, and a lot of creativity. So a couple things that I wanna just give you some back background information about. First of all, is that in my classroom of 24 kindergartners, I had five devices. So we had five iPads that we all shared. And I, in the picture here on the left, you'll notice this is in my classroom at the front of my room. I had a space that was our home base for devices. So one key part of independence in my situation was that the student, you know, we were really familiar with when we were using that device, it went back so it was easily accessible to the next person. We had practice seesaw and, you know, baby steps, right? Itty bitty steps. But my students were rock and rolling with Seesaw by, I think, the 23rd day of kindergarten, um, meaning they could sign in by themselves. They were taking a photo. They were recording their voice um, and adding it to Seesaw all independently. So on the right here, what you're seeing is actually a, a literacy station menu. So I followed the framework similar to the daily five. And I think when I started teaching, you know, 15 years ago compared to even, you know, five years in and then five years later in my teaching career, I kind of switched how I did literacy stations a little bit. But one of the things I did early on, which worked really well for me, is that I created a menu. So students, instead of being assigned to a station each day, at the beginning of a week, they got a station menu, and they could then decide each day what they were going to do. So the example of this menu here on the right is an, a, probably an example of a, a menu, a literacy station menu from like one of the second weeks that they were maybe involved in literacy stations. So there are four different options you see here, listen to reading, read to self, ABC word work, and the writing station. We hadn't quite built up to uh, read to someone yet, but basically students would just color in the station that they went to. They had a station folder and that's kind of where, where it all was housed. Um, this session isn't going to be, you know, teaching you how to do stations. I just wanted to give you some context about how it was set up in my classroom. I also wanted to share this example on the right because 
you'll notice that sometimes in the station menu, I actually put a seesaw icon. So they knew like, oh yeah, you know, this week when I'm reading out of my book box, I'm gonna make sure to read one of my books to Mrs. Gadke. So, and anytime students were at other stations, they could also feel free to document their work, share their learning, with um, one of our classroom devices as well. So that's a little bit of background information for you and we can talk more at the end um, about questions as well. So um, one question coming in right now is there, some people are looking at the writing station. So my writing station had four options that they could choose which one they were going to do. Again, I, I was a firm believer in choice and um, independence, and I think bringing Seesaw in supported all of those things that I was hoping to do, but also some accountability as well. So one of the things I wanna let you know is often I'm asked, well, I only have, you know, I don't, I don't have one-to-one -one devices, is this gonna work? And you're gonna be totally fine. Uh, like I said, in my classroom, I had five devices. So just to really hit this point home a little bit in this presentation. I actually have little icons on each slide that will say share devices or one-to-one -one devices. Now on all slides I could say this works really great on shared. If I have it say shared devices, it's also going to work really great in one-to-one -one devices obviously. But there are some activities I will share with you that I feel work better if you're one-to-one, -one, just based on timing and how many students you want to complete um, or respond to that activity. And again, this is in the context of how I approached it in my classroom. Of course, you can do what works best in your classroom as well. So, all right, let's talk a little bit about WordWork. So I had a WordWork station. This photo on the left here might be familiar to you if you've ever come to Brand New to Seesaw Part One. So. Uh, this is just an example of how my students blended those physical hands-on materials with Seesaw. So a lot of times in my shared device classroom, they were, they were creating more and doing a lot of their work off of Seesaw and then using Seesaw to capture, um, annotate and draw on it and record their reflection. So I think that's also one of the keys if you have shared devices, um, a way to kind of approach it so students are able to add their content more frequently and create more frequently as well. So keep that in mind. So on the left here, you see that they're using um, sight words, they're sorting them, they've created a, you know, they've drawn their own um, thinking map, their tree map, and they have used Seesaw to snap the picture. They've annotated what, you know, what they would call, how they sorted it, T and not T, and then they've read their words. On the right, this is just an example that actually links to Seesaw activities. And what this is is a, is a word building activity. So students, again, this is just an example of them using hands-on materials to do their creating and making words. So what I would do then with Seesaw, the Seesaw component would be taking a photo, reading those words. So we're gonna go through a couple of examples. So I found this one, I was like, oh my gosh, I found this one today. Um, my students loved this. And as you'll notice in the bottom, I have highlighted this as shared devices. And again, of course, it's gonna work if you have one-to-one -one devices as well. So I'm actually going to click here to kind of show you a little bit about this rainbow word puzzle um, activity. And some of you might be like, I've seen this, Angela, but I wanna talk a little bit about it. So. Um, I wanna explain how I have it set up so that if you have used the activity feature, you might get a new idea here. So in this activity, basically what students are doing is, you know, I have these rainbow strips set up and they are going to take sight word, sight word cards from their sight word bag and they're, they're writing the words, they're cutting the word apart, and then they're mixing it up and they're fixing it. So I'm not gonna play this whole video, but I wanna show this activity because number one, you can use it and find it in the activity library. But I, because I was teaching kindergarten, it was also very important to me that there was fine motor, they were cutting, they were writing, they were mixing things up, there was that movement. But then we still brought in the piece of Seesaw as well. So when I was building this activity, if you're not yet aware, you can, in the example portion, put anything multimedia. So in this activity, students would actually watch this first. 
So I'm going to click on it. Oh, I'm it's going to ask me to save it first. But um, when students would click on this, they would see the video that's showing them how to do this activity. And then at the end, you can see the directions here. They'll be taking a photo, they'll be reading their words, and they'll be adding it to Seesaw. So this is one of my students' favorite favorites. And there's a follow-up activity to this as well in the Seesaw Activity Library where they exchange um, puzzle, word puzzles. So what I like about this, of course, uh, they, they're choosing. They're choosing the words they're going to build. It's embedding a lot of various you know, literacy skills as well. But again, back to if you don't have one-to-one -one devices, it's okay because it it's really, really quick for them to snap a photo, read these words. As the student, as the teacher, then you're getting this quick check-in from your students as well for how they are progressing related to, you know, just a quick check-in with, you know, those sight words that they are focusing on right there. Um, the next thing I want to show you, I'm looking down here because I'm getting my next thing ready to show you here. Uh, the next example is I wanted to show you a similar activity that we had created in the Seesaw Activity Library that was based off that activity I did with my share devices, but we thought, oh, let's make a version that works with Seesaw in the sense that we're going to put the, word, the words already in there broken up. Students, when they get this activity, they can you know, add the response and all of these will be there ready for them to sort and fix the words. So on, I'm suggesting one-to-one -one with this, but what I also want to say is in my classroom, I didn't often have students, like I've mentioned, I didn't often have them, you know, all holding the iPad because they couldn't do that. They didn't have that. Um, so if I wanted this to be a one-to-one -one situation at a station, I could have five students that this might be their station and they were working on this the whole time um, or not the whole time, but as a longer time. Most of the time in my kindergarten classroom, when students were using and documenting with Seesaw, it was really, really quick. So it really depends on how you want to approach this with your um, class as well. The reason, again, I'm saying one to one is it's going to take a little bit longer than, you know, the examples I showed previously with you know, five students can be making, creating, and building, and cutting words with physical materials, and then using Seesaw to kind of capture that end product, whereas in this one, they are working on it the entire time, if that makes sense. So if you're thinking, what is this? What are they doing here? All of these links are here, and um, I can save this and actually play this for you. So when students respond to this activity, uh, they will, let's just share it. Where am I? Angela's activity class. When they respond, they're actually going to get the template already for them. So I'm going to choose, I'm going to be William today. Um, and when they tap this label tool, the T down there, these are all movable. So they sort by color. So if you read my instructions for the rainbow word building with the physical strips of paper, it's the same thing, but they're creating all of these words by themselves. So as you can see, I'm spelling the word, you know, I'm doing that. So um, the next thing I'm going to talk about is this idea, which I have, I have my own personal third grader at home that loves to test things out for me. So we get a lot of people that are asking, oh, I want to, what about multiple pages? I want them to draw and write and talk on multiple pages. Uh, and we hear you, we know, we know. Uh, and we often say, you shadow puppet, you shadow puppet. But this, I'm going to show you a way that you can play around inside Seesaw. So I'm super excited to um, show this to you because I was playing around with this uh, over the past few days. And this example, um, let me see. I'm actually going to try to play the example here. Sorry, we're going on a little tour of my other slides, but um, in this activity, I'm going to save it so I can play play the end example so you can see it. Um, again, this is an activity where students would be sorry. I've got all sorts of tabs open, so thanks for thanks for joining my adventure here. <laughs> with all my tabs open. All right. How's everyone doing? Let's just share this and then we'll go back to my, 
my class. If you're brand new to Seesaw, I'm moving really, 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 really quickly here. But I want to just play this example so you can kind of see what's going to happen. And then I'm actually going to show you how to make this happen. So this is what kind of an end example would look like here. This is a station where students are going to be playing and manipulating, building consonant, vowel, consonant words. Hat. Hot. Pop, pop, pot. Okay, so how does that work? You said you could do that all in one thing? All right, so this particular one is only going to work with these directions if you have iPads, which a lot of you here today do. So right now on the screen, you are seeing me sign in as a student on an iPad. So I have this activity and basically it looks super complicated, right? So I definitely would not throw this at your kindergartners or first graders um, without modeling this whole group first so they kind of understand the process. And if they need to use the icons in the activity as picture cues, go for it. I would never just send this to them and be like, figure it out. Um, so what I'm going to do is I am going to tap the add button and you'll notice that there is a template already attached to this activity. And if you're thinking, Angela, I don't want to start with the word cap, not a big deal. You can actually modify the template as well because I just made it in the drawing tool. So what students are actually going to do is they're starting with the word cap. So the direction said they're going to tap the drawing tool. And the reason they're tapping drawing is because I want them to get to that record button first. So they're going to tap record, they're going to read the word, cap, and then they're going to push pause, okay? Now at the bottom, I need to change one letter. So I'm going to get my eraser, I am going to change the first letter, I'm going to erase it, then I'm going to switch back to my drawing tool, I'm going to make it a T at the beginning, now I have tap, let's read it, tap. Pause again. Now I'm back to the eraser. How about I change the last letter? I'm gonna change the last letter. We are gonna make it, what does it say now? Let's record. Tan, pause it. Gonna go back to the eraser. Let's do the middle vowel. Okay, I'm gonna put an I. Tin. Okay, so obviously your students can just keep building and building. You might also give them some parameters of like, how many words can you build in 10 seconds? 10 seconds meaning pausing and stopping. Um, of course, you see I'm using the pause button because I'm eliminating, you know, the 10 minute video that could be coming at you. But I also would encourage your students, of course, depending on what you're working on, you could do any level of making word act activities like this. I'm going to tap the green check. I'm going to save this. It's going to go to my teacher. And then if we play this, well, let's see here. It wanted to see if I wanted to do more things, but it's waiting for approval. But you can see as the example, kind of what it turned out like if it'll play. Right, it's almost like a stop motion animation, which is kind of cool. So again, that is a way that you could potentially get around the multiple um, pages. Also think about how you could approach that with storytelling or retelling a story beginning, middle and end. Maybe they use the erase all button and start their you know, picture again or something like that. Again, I would probably uh, error to your, to one to one devices or a group, you know, students working on their own device at that station if you have shared devices as well. All right, let's move along to reading. My gosh, we, we're, we have so much to talk about still. I need to get going. Okay, so concepts of print, right? So this is a really, really simple um, example. This was at my guided reading table, and we were trying to, I was working with a little group of friends that we were still working on things like what's the number, what's the, What's a letter? What's a sentence? So on the left here, the students in the group, were ju they just took a, a photo. And I have this big green add button in the center right here to remind you that your students 
can just tap that green ad button and that will take them right to the creative tools. So you don't always have to have an, an activity waiting for them. If you're doing something in a small group and you haven't shared an activity, but you know exactly the steps they're gonna take, just do it right there. They can tap that ad button. Same thing if they're at a writing station. Um, when I was in my kindergarten classroom, we did not have activities yet. They're amazing and I'm so excited about them. But I also want you to remember that your students can still tap that green ad button. So in the example here on the bottom left, I said to students, I said, you know, in orange, circle a number. In green, circle the sentence. Um, find a word, just circle one word. And then on the right, these were students that were just circling the words in a sentence. Again, you might think that's not anything brilliant. Not really, it's just an, a small enhancement on what was happening and it was really a good way for these students that were still trying to you know, even track print to really be able to visually discriminate those, those differences. Here's another activity, vocabulary. So this works great. Um, I would say this is more probably first, second grade, um, the concept of a personal dictionary. So again, this activity is ready for you and what students are doing if they're reading a book and they get to a word that they don't know or maybe you have set vocabulary each week, how are they connecting to it? Are they writing out the definition? Are they doing a drawing? Are they making a personal connection? So this is just an idea you could do as well to enhance um, what you're currently doing in, in during your literacy stations. I wanna point out too that another kind of pro tip here is if you wanna keep these activity, um, the responses in their journal easily accessible to the students in terms of being able to filter them, it's a great idea to add a folder specific to this. So I might suggest adding a folder called personal dictionaries or vocabulary, so that if you share this activity to them and tag that folder, all the responses are going to be you know, added to that folder. So that on the student side, when they tap their name and they, they tap that vocabulary folder, they're going to see all of the content that is in their vocabulary folder. So it really turns out to be a personal dictionary, which is kind of cool. All right, and again, this activity is ready for you. It's just a template, so they can use the drawing tools, they can use labels, and of course, that works on any device in your classroom. The next thing I wanna talk about are fluency checks, right? Don't we always wish we had more time to hear every single kid read to us? Um, my friend Cindy Vance, oh my goodness, amazing kindergarten teacher. This is my favorite activity for how do you get students to be able to record and read, and then, you know, they're not holding the device. This is the key right here. So they are hands-free, they have the iPad up here, they push the record button, they're shooting video, they're right under it so you can really hear them really well. Their hands are free, so they can point to text. Even when you're working with older students, this is, you know, this is a kindergartner, but this is perfect for second graders. You don't necessarily have to have someone else that's trying to videotape them. So this is a great solution for that. So shout out to Cindy, I love it, I love it. Another one of Cindy's ideas that I love um, is the idea of reading for a classmate, right? And it's something that, you know, they have their book boxes and we're always, you know, having them reread because we know how valuable that is in their development. But sometimes students really need that purpose. Why am I having to read this book? You know, why am I doing this over and over? Um, so this gives them a little of that added purpose, meaning that, you know, if they're ready to read, this book for maybe this special collection in your classroom. They can record their reading in Seesaw, and then as Cindy has here, she has printed out those QR codes to the classmates reading. So she has this out at a station where students could just grab and listen to someone else. How cool is that, right? So one tweak I thought, how amazing would this be is if you buddied with an older class. You know, maybe there's a, third grader or second grader that's maybe really struggling with fluency and you want, you know, maybe they're reading at the first grade level or the kindergarten level. Wouldn't it be cool if they recorded books for those younger students, but yet still had, you know, the ability to work at, you know, the level that they were working at as well. So again, pro tip, create the folder, put all of the responses there so then you can print out all these QR codes easy peasy um, just by tapping the three dots and then print. So 
commenting. Oh my goodness. I think we only have a minute left, but boy, oh boy, hang out because we have a lot more to talk about here. Um, my friend, Sophia Garcia Smith, amazing second grade teacher. Uh, she came up, she, well, she, I don't know if she came up with it, but boy, she, she taught me about tag and basically it's a system that she uses to really support her students in learning how to comment. So when we're thinking about reading, I think it's also a great time during a literacy station to have students, maybe they're reading someone else's writing and they're commenting on it. Maybe they're listening to them reading and they're leaving a comment. This is a great structure she uses to model and practice good commenting, even with her second graders. Um, I use this with my kindergartners and you're gonna see a five minute video linked here of her explaining all of it, which is totally awesome. All right, I apologize for having way more content than I, uh, than I have time for, but we're gonna, go, we're gonna go for it. So let's talk about cloning ourselves. So basically, you, have you wanted to be in two spaces at, at once, right? Two places at once, I have. So this is really simple to do in Seesaw. So this is an example of me, actually. Uh, I took a photo of a, a, basically it was a worksheet that this small group was going to do. And it was, um, I think these were my high flyers and actually normally another teacher came in to my classroom on this day, but five minutes before I learned that she wasn't gonna be there. So I was like, oh my gosh, what are, what are we gonna do with this group? So I quick took a photo of the mini lesson and then recorded my voice in a video. So my students were able to have me over there. Kindergarten readers, this is Mrs. Gadke. Today you're going to learn about a contraction. A con I'm gonna fast forward. So I'm explaining it and then off they go. So this is something that you could have at a station. Um, you could share it as an activity. And again, this is made just in Seesaw. It's not, you know, there's not all sorts of other apps, but easy peasy. Shout out to Marnie Lambitz and Megan Collins because whoo, I think they were the first uh, first grade teachers that I saw talking about using Seesaw for spelling tests. Talk about cloning yourself. Um, basically what they do is they record themselves giving the spelling test so that students can take it on their own time, even at a station. So they recorded it on Seesaw, they um, took a photo, they actually made these cute little you know, backgrounds that you see here, they take a photo and they record the test. I also, um, Jimmy, one of our very lively, active uh, third grade teachers in our third grade group. Oh my gosh, every time I see his post, he makes me smile. This is an example of a video he Happy shared. Valentine's Day, third grade. I love my third graders so much that for Valentine's Day, I decided to give them a spelling test. It's a rollover from last week. We had two unexpected ice days. So folks at home, I'm really not that wicked. So here we go. Please make sure you have your name, number, and your date on the top of your paper. Number one, cell, cell. All right, so you get the idea there. So again, wow, can you think of the opportunities in your classroom if you weren't spending you know, the chunk of time giving the test to, maybe you have tons of different groups. Uh, this is a continuation of an idea from Marnie and Megan. This is uh, from a presentation that they shared, a webinar they did uh, last year that was just, it, it just inspires me. So basically they have individualized spelling tests, meaning they differentiate for spelling at a level that, you know, I think we all would love to get to. So basically this is an example of, on the previous slide, they had recorded the spelling list. Okay, and then they printed the QR code for each spelling list, and then that is displayed in their room throughout the school year. Okay, so that means that if you know if you're a, if you're a kiddo that's on spelling list 16, you would just walk over to this QR code, scan it, listen to them giving the spelling list, take your paper and pencil, write it down, and then you know you've got your 20 different kids, maybe potentially doing 20 different lists at the same time. So they teamed up and worked on this together, both of the teachers. So that might be a great thing for you to think about as well. I just, I mean, I love, I just love this image. And I think of all of the time um, that it's, it's actually used to support the student, but also the differentiation that can actually happen. So that gets me really excited. Whew, I really talked extremely fast, 
But I want to pause because I've just flooded you, hopefully, with some ideas. But I want you to just grab, you know, jot a little note right now because I want you to think about for a moment of all the things that I just threw at you, some ideas coming your way, what will you actually try in the next 24 hours? And maybe it's, what are you gonna try in the next 72 hours after those 24 hours? So just take a moment and write down what you're thinking as you participated here today. Think about what you might want to try and do with your students having heard um, some ideas, and we're going to go into questions here in a moment, but jot that down, make yourself a little bit accountable um, for, I feel like, I feel personally, if I write things down, I'm more attuned to actually do them, but I also want to take a moment, and I know I went over a few minutes here, so I want to respect your time, but just so you know, I hope you connect with our community on all these different channels and come back for more webinars, too.